Fine, so let's look at the next case study. There are two left. And as I was telling you, Interdocs has several sections. This workshop, this seminar, tomorrow we have the interactive speech at the CCCB Auditorium. Then we have also an interactive seminar like the one we've seen, where we'll get to see sexy sex and Americas and Chihuahuas. These are Oddball musician, the Catalan musician, and then the web docs that we do on Friday with three awards, and then the meeting point, which is the monthly meeting with different types of people. This is what I was telling this morning, but another important part of Docs Barcelona are VR ex exhibitions on people that are going through dire situations. We have two of them, uh, one that are Refugi 360, Shelter 360, and I strongly suggest you take a look at this and networking. I know it's interesting and from half past five probably to seven, you will get to see also at EGM this nice two minute work, what it feels like being inside a shelter. And then, we also have eight VR headsets where you can get to see some works on how people in Syria and South Sudan are suffering. The experience of the refugees. A very nice experience, uh, two, three minutes down here, and then at the Patti de las Donas yard, two and a half minutes. So just five minutes, they, you will be given a very short uh, introduction. And to conclude, now we have invited some of the people behind this, some of the culprits. Joan Guash, uh, the EGM Laboratory School Arts, and then Amaya Esparza, the Head of Communications at Metz in South Frontier. Thank you, welcome. And now the second to last presentation of today's Into Docs. ¿Qué nos cuesta tanto ponernos en su lugar? Médicos Sin Fronteras te invita a conocer cómo viven los refugiados y las víctimas de la guerra. Cómo es su vida, dónde se refugian, cómo se sienten. Acércate a sus vidas a través de la realidad virtual. Son millones de personas atrapadas huyendo con un solo objetivo. Seguir con vida. Hola, buenas tardes y gracias. Good afternoon and thank you for being here. We are used or we are getting used to seeing 360 videos on extreme sports content, on concerts, but then you may wonder what an organization such as Medicine Sans Frontier is doing in working with this type of technology. Well, this is why we're here for this afternoon, where this idea stem from, why we decided to support this, and what are the lessons learned and the, and the outcomes. It all started when we started working on the next campaign we wanted to work for in the coming three years. And out of this campaign, we wanted it to address feelings and emotions of people, of people that was to be the recipients of this campaign. We wanted this to be felt, to be smelt, to be touched. And we were thinking about the type of material of a storytelling that we may resort to in order to attain this. And we wanted this because MSF is a an organization working on the field often in under precarious conditions and this is often far or detached from the audience we're targeting with our media. So we wanted to break 
this detachment, this distance, and we wanted to engage the audiences in our countries where we are working on the communication campaign. The goal we had in mind was to report and to raise awareness on these situations we were working in, but given that these are very complex and quite apart, it was difficult. That was a true challenge. How did we decide to look into 360 technology? Since we ha are in touch with some people in the academia, we were speaking precisely one day with the po univer Technical University of Catalonia, and when he told us about the 360 technology. And back then, when he told us that this was moving in here and about the possibilities that one could get, that was when we realized that that was what we needed for, and we decided to go for it. But yet, who could help us in developing this type of content, given that we are not acquainted with this technology and we need some support to make this possible? This is where a EGM and jumped in, and even though we had already doing some other things through Joan and the university, and the university, and this is how we started working on all content, all 360 content for this campaign that we are now about to launch. Don't know if you want to tell us more about the challenges and what it meant to you when jumping into this uh, development. Well, the truth is that to us it was quite. Uh, astonish we uh, quite amazing because we are have an experience in CGI we are also experts at creating 3d virtual spaces we also had the developers built for the oculus headset where we were representing different virtual spaces but they were all generated on 3d so when we started discussing things with MSF we found that this was astonishing in how what we could convey through these headsets. Even though the headsets in our minds were like for different things, all of a sudden we saw that we had the opportunity to communicate different things. And I, I must say that this was our first 360 live action project. We had been working on 3D, but we had not shot, shot yet on 360, and that was quite a challenge from the very beginning. It was indeed a pleasure, a pleasure to work with MSF, and I think that also as content producer, we need to be close to our customer. Although we were probably not the customer, we were all moving along, and I remember how we discussed things with Maya on things that could be done, couldn't be done, and to move on, to innovate, and I know that there are many videos on the internet about divers and so on, but we wanted to tell a bit more, and technically speaking, we had to sort out a series of technological challenges, but yet we were always working together and to bring this into different cities and with this given complexity. One of the things I wanted to convey here is that in order to innovate, you need to overcome fear. And that, what we did was trusting the professionalism of parties involved in this project. And even though we were not sure about what was our field, it was clear what we wanted to achieve in the end. It was this mutual trust that helped us building this project from scratch that has been evolving and that has changed significantly from the very inception when we thought what could be done until what we, until we got what we now have. We will now show you some frames, some shots of these 360 videos that you can get to see at the Pate de las Donas Baguera at CCCB. Uh, exhibition that I would invite you to join and look. But before that, let me tell you that the images we'll be seeing now are, of course, 
extend that. And so the best thing is to go through using the headset. But I hope you get the idea. These are just a small fragments. Estos son los campos elíseos, el eje central del campo de Zatari. Así llaman los refugiados a esta calle llena de comercios que dan una falsa sensación de normalidad. Los refugiados quieren volver a casa, pero Siria sigue en guerra. Y sin perspectivas de futuro, los que tienen más recursos dan el salto y emprenden una peligrosa ruta para llegar a Europa. Una barcaza cargada de refugiados llega a la isla griega de Lesbos. Este es el principal punto de entrada para los sirios que huyen por Turquía. Los naufragios se suceden y los refugiados apenas reciben asistencia. El peligro del mar es solo el primer obstáculo en su ruta hacia Europa. No es raro que viajen familias enteras, incluso con bebés. Los refugiados que llegan sanos y salvos a Lesbos aún tienen mucho camino por recorrer. Esto es solo el comienzo. El cierre de fronteras hace que los refugiados se afinen. Aquí miles de personas esperan a que la policía croata abra la valla. Llevan más de un día esperando bajo la lluvia. La situación es desesperada, sobre todo para los más pequeños y para las personas que hacen la ruta en silla de ruedas. La guerra los expulsó de su país y ahora se encuentran con una Europa que les cierra las puertas, demostrando que para los países ricos el derecho de asilo que protege a los refugiados es papel mojado. El sufrimiento les persigue lejos de la guerra. Ya está. Vale, bueno, acabamos de ver tres fragmentos de uno de los. Just seen three clips of the one of the videos, which is the Syrian exodus. You've seen three. Shots that are merged through these fading black, but since we did not know back then how the technology worked, we thought that we could only have still shot, and that was it. But little by little, as we managed to have different content, we got to learn by doing, and we saw that we could relate that we could link in one single piece the different shots with the, through this in black and it was a project that where we've been surprised because throughout the life of it we've been learning more and more on how to edit them because at first we thought that it was only one single shot every time that someone would view the video. So maybe Joan can tell us a bit more about this technical part. On yes, the, the, something that's been quite a trending topic these days is about storytelling. And us working either in linear or non-linear, it doesn't matter, we often find this common drum in that we have this 360 material, but then where do you edit this? Or it's the usual question you ask yourselves as an editor. It's quite a different view, and since you need to provide for the environment so that the viewer has the time to watch the details that you want him to set his look upon. But then it's quite different because it may happen in 360 that there is an action going on behind you but you cannot tell the viewer about this because you would break away with the immersion. And one thing that we've discussed is the breathing time as we call it where people are setting their eyes on some specific items on the landscape. And this was also a challenge, visually speaking, on how to let the viewer to understand things. The technology we wanted to use and viewing was also another challenge because at first we were thinking about using the Oculus headset, but in February this year Oculus were still being pre-ordered on the internet just one headset per 
buyer. So it was difficult because on March we had to launch our campaign. So we started seeing other different possibilities. And finally, we chose the Samsung gear, which had some advantages versus the Oculus other than availability. And we got this as a donation from Hong Kong. And furthermore, we could use smartphones and you could download all the PC software, which was quite an investment. Yes, the Oculus thing. I must say that the Oculus kickoff has been quite um, a bit old to all of us. It works, but it gets tricky. We are still at its infancy, and even though there are very complex professional productions, but still, camera wise and reproduction wise, there is still much room for improvement. So, Samsung's gear was much easier. I mean, it was made simpler to us because you could download this through a smartphone that you could have on any city and uh, you requiring no PC, no drivers. So we were fortunate in that Samsung really supported this. And HTC was also on ours. Uh, something that we were considering but yet they were still developing this not m very well implemented back then maybe in the near future but yeah in order to deepen into the lessons learned even though it's always good to know about things that can be improved next time some of the lessons learned in some of the videos the shot was too high so it was not at your the normal height of the viewer as if you feel like kind of floating levitating and so next time we need to lower the height of the camera so that the feeling is indeed that you are right in between the action another thing that we've learned is how to shoot a 360 video. No doubt, this is different. Fade to black, the color switches and the co color fine-tuning is something that we need to learn. Uh, how long should it last at 360? We've estimated that three, 30 seconds at least for the viewer to get his way around and the script you cannot leave it just on improvisation even though you are recording things things must happen otherwise it gets boring for the viewer so to which extent you should commission you should prepare that scene so that the viewer is really entertained and decides to set his sight upon something this is, um, these are things that we've learned in these two videos and hopefully will be further implemented into some upcoming videos. One thing is that when we got the material by MSF, first, in the first viewings, we had in doubt what to pick and why to pick that image versus another one. And it, even though it was uncomfortable because we had to do the stitching, which is the process of joining the six cameras, and when you see this unfolded picture, it's difficult to get to realize it. And it's not until you use the headset that you realize whether that shot works or not. And we saw that the most attractive ones were precisely the ones that in four different points surrounding you different things are happening. We tend to have this 2D viewing and when you turn around at a free wheel and something's going on right behind you, that's, that comes as a surprise to most viewers because you are conveying many things and this is what Amaya was saying and this is, was our dilemma and how to curate this and how to what should be the height, the proper height, and where should be the proper placement of the camera. Because otherwise it wouldn't make much sense to just be around and 
look around, you see a forest. Wow, well, I mean, what, what's in that? It just, it wouldn't make much sense. The fact of having three, four areas where there are some, where there is some action taking place, we believe it's the most interesting thing for the viewer. And also, the audience reaction. Now that we are touring this exhibition, what we, the feedback we've got is overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive. People felt like they were there, that, like they were the protagonists in those videos, and they were really shocked and with a strong things on that thing that we wanted to convey, which was precisely our goal in this campaign. And to stress maybe an added value for the 360 videos and for us as MSF, the added value for immersive technology is that allows you to get into the feelings and to shift into the world of feelings and emotions of audience. It is there where we all, as humans, can work on empathy and solidarity. So we, as a human, humanitarian NGO, it's been quite a positive result, quite a um, discovery, is it all? And we will be working on this in the coming years. Not sure if Juan wants to tell a bit more, otherwise, thank you, if you don't have any questions. Uh. We have time for a couple of questions, and uh, then Joan will stay with us, and we'll have the last very brief presentation of the afternoon. Has anybody been, has anybody tried the Médecins Sans Frontières uh, experience this afternoon? One, one of you. Okay, okay, well, we'll get there. We have a question. A couple of brief questions. I haven't seen the experience yet, but I will, of course. My first question, does the camera move? And the uh, second, if that is the case. Technically speaking, from a narration point of view, is there anything sort of important to take into account? And second, sound. Is there, what kind of uh, technical limitations for narration are there? for the person who, who lives the experience uh, not to be overwhelmed by too many sounds so, so that you know, the sound can be privileged from one side or the other according to the person's, the user's point of view. Oh, that's funny, because that's the first question that people tend to ask when we talk about 360. The first question tends to be, can I walk? As I was saying before, if we use video game technology, we, we worked with Unity, which is the video game engine which is most popular with this kind of thing. Yeah, you can walk, you need a, a, a remote as if you were playing with any console. But other than that, the language is completely different. It's really interactive. You move, you decide where you go. For this particular project, the camera does not move. There's only one thing, the river in southern Sudan. Yeah, the camera went on a canoe, and the canoe obviously moves slowly. And that was one of the things we decided to start with. What we wanted to tell was a situation that was happening, so it didn't make a lot of, a lot of sense for the camera to move. And obviously, from a narrative point of view, if it moves, you have to justify why it moves. And if it just moves kind of magically, we lose the point of view of the universal spectator, you know, a person who is somehow magically beamed somewhere and they can look around. So, uh, we have another project down here where we move the camera, but it's completely different. I think you just have to choose from a storytelling point of view what you want to do, whether there is just one character or many, or there is you want the user to feel as somebody's point of view. And for this particular project, we just wanted to have a contemplative attitude. We just place you there, and then it's up to you. 
And then about sound. There is 360 sound technology, but it was too expensive for us, for our budget, and we didn't have a technician to develop it. So we decided to go for traditional sound, and that's one of our challenges for coming years. I hear there's been uh, lots of uh, participants this afternoon. It's, it's great, and it's really transmedia because there are pictures, images, performances, uh, small demonstrations, master class, uh, video. There is a micro site where all the documentation can be consumed apart from written reports. Yeah, okay. Well, we are delighted to have this as interdocs. This is what we were missing apart from the conference, the pitch. We wanted to see the the presentation itself, and we hope we'll be able to contribute and cooperate with Medicine Sans Frontiers, with whomever, to try to make the world a better place. So thank you both. Enjoy.